Is that working now? Oh, yes, that's working. I'm going to try something. Last week, I was so proud of myself. I know you didn't expect to see me this week, but uh, I'm here. Pastor uh, called on Monday night and had the opportunity, maybe just down a touch, Bong, do you think it's a little heavy, um, to go to Saskatchewan. And so I said, fine, be happy to uh, share a few words with you today. Um, this works really well. Last week I had rigged up a hacky sack and a telephone iPhone cover protector to prop my iPad up. I thought it was really great. Uh, and all I had to do was borrow that all the time. I, I struggled on what to get there, and it works well. Okay. You know, it's, it's nice to see so many new people here today, too. Uh, I was expecting this morning, especially after I got the phone calls from Karen, the, the pastor's family wasn't here, and others. Well, there will be a few of us, I know, because I'm going to be there. Paulette's going to be there. And uh, we picked up Sharon, and so she was going to be there. Um, wasn't really sure, so it's nice. And I see that there are some new faces. I've introduced myself to some uh, people who are new to our church, and we're just so happy to see our visitors. Thank you so much for coming and joining us on this Sabbath day. I pray that you are blessed, that you have been up to this point, and I encourage you to stay for the potluck afterwards, meet a few people, and uh, find out what the Grand Prairie Church is all about. So I, I certainly hope that you will have a blessed Sabbath here. Uh, I wish I could stay and meet you more, and I hope I see you again coming. If you're not just visiting today, uh, I have a funeral to go to this afternoon, and uh, so I won't be able to stay. But uh, it's good to see you all here, so praise God that we are gathered on this day. Our first Sabbath in the new year. What's the title of the sermon today? Health Check. Huh? Partial? Full? Few of you read your bulletins. Uh, that's good. That's good. You know, I went to the doctor the other day, and it made me, this is where this came from. It was a couple of weeks ago. I went for my tests last week. Um, and this visit was different. It wasn't, it wasn't the usual thing where you go in and say, oh, I've got a really bad cold, or my big toe is really causing me grief today, doc. Um, where it's a specific thing that the doctor looks at it, assesses it, and then gives you some direction. This was one of those visits where you went and it was called the physical. The physical checkup. Where he looks at me and checks me out from top to bottom and, and just makes sure that all the pieces are there and that things are working in a relatively good way. But what he's really looking for, because these are regular kinds of things, you do this once a year or so, um, is have there been changes? Have there been changes in your life, in your, in your physical health, that maybe uh, you haven't been aware of? He's looking at me from all different directions and uh, trying to give me an idea of um, what the changes might mean. To my life. Every year, we really do need this good comprehensive examination to determine how we are really physically and what we have to do to improve things. And as important as that may be, as important as that may be, there's another side of life, isn't there, that is just as important to ensure that we monitor, check, and find out if it's healthy. What is that side of life? I heard the word. It's our spiritual side of life. It's an area of life that also needs regular comprehensive checking. If we don't do it, you may suffer the consequences, just as with your physical checks on a regular basis. 
Today I want to lead us in a self-administered. It's up to you. You're going to administer it, basically. I'm just going to give you some points along the way of a spiritual health check for your new year. We're going to be focusing on three areas spoken of nine or ten times in the little books of Timothy and Titus. Nine or ten times the Apostle Paul in his letters to Timothy and Titus spoke about sound doctrine, sound faith, and sound words. And so that's where the focus is going to be. And this is our health check, spiritual health check for this year. Because he is talking about, to them, about healthy doctrine, healthy faith, and healthy speech. These are things that we need if we are going to be healthy Christians. Will you bow your heads with me for just a moment of prayer, please? Lord, please give me the words that you want. They may not be the words that are on this little iPad. They may be other words, but whatever it is, Lord, give them to me. The words that are going to make a difference in the lives of all of us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I'll begin just like my doctor began. How is your health today? How is your health today, he said. Are you feeling good? Spiritually, we're talking today. He was talking physically. But how is your health today? You know, such words, I used to think that when he asked me that, well, how are you today? Well, I'm here, what do you think? <laughs> There's something wrong. You know, it, it's, it's more like a greeting. But it isn't. When you're asked the question, how is your health today? Your doctor is really asking you to think about your answer, to consider the aches and the pains and the weaknesses and the changes in your health that you may have experienced and noticed over the last period of time since you've gone through a checkup, since you've seen your doctor. Are there changes? Because many times we simply dismiss things. We attribute them to what we ate. We attribute them that we went to bed too late. We attribute them to too much exercise. We attribute them to other things. Your doctor is saying, take a look at yourself. Think about it. Have things changed? How is your health today? So as I pondered this question, I had to admit to myself, physically, that boy, oh boy, I've let some things slide. You know, as I thought about it, I saw that, yeah, things fit differently. I feel different. And so in my mind, I could see that there was something that I had to do, I could do. Because I looked at myself a year ago, and I thought about what I was like and what I was doing a year ago, and I compared it to today, and I say, hey, I don't feel quite the same way, and I'm not doing quite the same things and so maybe I have to go back and start putting in some resistance training, putting in a little more walking, doing these kinds of things. So when I ask you how your spiritual health is today, I'm asking you to begin that spiritual health check by really considering what is your life like as a Christian? 2 Corinthians 13.5 tells us, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves, we're told. So what has your Christian experience been like? What has your spiritual experience been like? What is it today? Has it changed from what it was last year at the beginning of 2014? Have you changed in your spiritual life? Are you different for better or for worse? What do you think it should be? when we talk about your spiritual health, when you think about your spiritual health? How do you know that you are spiritually well? How do you maintain good spiritual health? These are questions that we should ask ourselves, think about, dwell upon, and try to come up with some answers for. Paul talks a number of times about the importance of sound doctrine. And I'm going to spend quite a bit of time on this. This is the first focus of our spiritual health check because it's key, it's foundational to our health. We must begin with a test of our beliefs. 
to see if we are supported by solid biblical doctrine that is consistent, consistent with the rest of the Bible. Our doctrine provides the principles we live by. That's where we find how we believe we should live through the doctrines that we take in and stand by. The fundamental truth that serves as the foundation for our belief and behavior. Chances are very good that if we have sound doctrine, our spiritual health is going to be pretty good. Our spiritual health has to be based on the right information. Consider these words from Paul as he wrote to Titus and to Timothy. In Titus 2.1, he said, But as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. And in 2 Timothy 1.13, he said, Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. And again to Titus in 1.9, he says, Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and convict those who contradict. Sound doctrine is important. He brings it up time and time and time again to these young pastors to tell them that they have to have it and they have to teach it. Sound doctrine not only keeps us on the right path, and this is the most beautiful thing about doctrine that we sometimes forget, that it is, also has an encouraging and uplifting effect in how we live our lives. One of the reasons we read, study, hear, teach, and preach from the Word of God, from the Bible, is because it is so encouraging. Research has shown that those who are positive in their outlook and encouraging in their actions and relationships are much more likely to have strongly held beliefs and are also like, less likely to suffer from disease. A true building block a solid foundation for joy, peace, and happiness in life is a positive, optimistic attitude. And sound doctrine is healthy. Sound doctrine encourages us because it is true. It's trustworthy. As you go through your Bible, as it's proven that what you believe is true, as you go through your life, it creates in you an encouragement of strength and joy and peace. Knowing the truth held within sound doctrine establishes an attitude of faith and hope and strength that naturally leads to joy, naturally leads to peace, naturally leads to happiness of heart. Now it can, it can happen to all of us that we are pulled down at times by the discouraging things around us. It can be things that have happened to us. It can be what has happened to our children. It can be what has happened to others that we know. But there are times when we are discouraged and sometimes our spiritual health grows weak because of it. But our hope can grow when we continue to be fed a healthy diet of sound doctrine. The Word is the bread of life. And ingesting the truth of the Word always gives us strength. On the other hand, false doctrine leads to a spiritually unhealthy lifestyle. If you're following the wrong ideas, and you know, false doctrine, and I, I don't know if this is the right time to enter this or not, it's just a thought that comes to my mind, with false doctrine, as we talk about false prophets and other things a little bit, it's not just people talking about God. Who are false prophets. It's not just people who are talking about the words of the Bible where we're saying false doctrine. It's people who lead us into things that are against the truth of the doctrine of the Bible. So that means if you start looking at areas of entertainment, of music, of the things that you read and the things that you do, if you become accepting of other things, those are also false doctrines that are, you can be led away to. And we have to be aware of that. False doctrine leads to spiritually unhealthy lifestyle. Ingesting the wrong things will lead to disease. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 8, he says, We know the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Why are some people spiritually unhealthy? 
the doctrine they have been following is not sound. And as Paul states as he goes on in the following verses, those who do not use the law lawfully, or as he says in verse 10, contrary to sound doctrine, will practice unspiritual activities. Do you have a battle in your life today? Has your spiritual life changed over the last while where your life has started to go down a certain road where you know that is a battle with the truth and the doctrine of the Word of God? You know what it is. If you do, you need to spend some time finding doctrine, sound doctrine that applies to that condition, that, that speaks about how we entertain ourselves, what we do with our lives, how we treat other people, whatever it is, but search for the doctrine that applies to what your condition is. Because that is the foundation of your life. To do that, you have to spend time in the Word. You have to spend time with the Bible. You have to spend time in prayer. You have to understand that God, through the Holy Spirit, is the only one who will teach you that doctrine. I can give you all sorts of scriptures, and I can talk from up here, but it's not going to make a difference. What you need to do is have that one-on-one with the Holy Spirit so he leads you as you look at that scripture. How does this relate to my life? How does this relate to what I need to stand upon? We cannot maintain good spiritual health if we are following false teaching. And false teaching is something we need to be wary of at all times. 2 Timothy 4, verses 1 to 3. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, we are told. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. Paul here is speaking to the Gnostic zealots of the time, but it's very relevant to us today as well. There will be those with the conscience seared by a hot iron, so indoctrinated by words that have massaged those itching ears. What is it we want to do? Well, then it must be all right. These things, people have said this. This is all right. We start to do what we think we want to have for ourselves. That's what he's talking about by those itching ears. Words they want to hear that feed their personal desires, that they no longer are able to see the truth. Beware. We can be led to digest false teaching because it's what we want to hear at the moment. But our spiritual health will inevitably suffer. Suffer we will find ourselves more easily discouraged if we go the way of false doctrine, more likely to sin, and more easily to, us, to stray into even more false, uh, serious false teaching. And if you don't think that can happen, I want you also to stop, especially the people of this church that I know, and think about, do you know someone who has been led astray? Do you know someone who has started to follow some false doctrine? Someone who is starting to talk about certain things that are not necessarily what we have fundamentally believed and have followed in our church. They may still believe in God. They still may talk good doctrine in many ways. But for some reason, they have pulled away to something special that has touched their itching ears, that that gives them something better, they think, that they want to bring to us. And they have pulled away from the church. In some cases, they've been sent away from the church because the doctrine they now believe is not sound. 1 John 4, 1 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Unfortunately, false prophets, false spirit, if permitted to gain a foothold, can deceive, we are told, even the very elect. Can. Don't have to. Won't in the final days. 
because those who are there will be on the foundation of solid, sound doctrine. And we must remember that even today we are engaged in warfare. You know, life is so good. I, I, thank you to, whether it was Shekinah or someone else, it, it, who just thank God for the good things that we have and how pleasant we have our life. And when we have that pleasant life, we can quite easily not see how things are slipping. Not recognize that we have a war to fight every moment of every day. A war that we can only fight through the power of Jesus Christ. Doctrine, sound doctrine, must be our foundation. So our first health check today is what is your doctrine? What is it you believe? What do you really believe? Is it based solely on the Word of God? And do you know it well enough to share it and to use it? With decisions in your life, you need the guidance of the Holy Spirit, but you need to have the decision based on sound doctrine that you find in the Word of God. Not on what feels good, not on what others say, not on what others are doing, but on sound, sound doctrine. The second health check for spiritual health follows logically. The Bible talks about sound faith in Titus uh, 1, 10 to 13. I'm just going to turn there. If you'd like, you can turn there as well. Titus 1, verses 10 to 13. And it says, For there are many insubordinate both idle talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole households, teaching things which they ought not for the sake of dishonest gain. One of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. Therefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. There's a connection. There's a connection. You need to read it a few times perhaps, but listen, there's a connection to if we listen to and follow doctrine that is unsound, then our faith will not be sound. Only sound doctrine produces sound faith. The people he is warning them about, that even their own prophet warned them about the activities that were there, were following an unsound doctrine. And because of that, their faith was compromised. Only sound doctrine produces faith. Sound spiritual health is predicated on sound spiritual intake. The SDA commentary, I read this, and it, it, it was just a nice statement. I felt told about what we need to do with unsound doctrine. As a surgeon's knife cuts away diseased tissue in order that sound health may result, so the words and discipline of Titan and the Cretan elders are to cut away that which endangers the future of the church. We are to cut away sound doctrine if it is infringing upon your spiritual health. As you look and answer the question that I asked at the very beginning, how is your spiritual health today? And if you think about your doctrine, if you think about that and there are things that are infringing, it's starting to slide, you need to cut them away. When that happens, the result is soundness of faith. Soundness of faith, and that's a key attribute of spiritual health. We're saved by what? By the grace of God through faith. We must have that sound doctrine. It leads to sound faith. Look at some of the Bible's descriptions of a life of sound faith. I'm taking these from Titus, verses, uh, chapter 2. And verses 1 to 8, you can read it in the words that are there. I'll use a little bit of paraphrase now and again. Verse 1 says, you must teach what is in accord with sound doctrine. We need to, t if you're going to teach, you need to have it. You have to have something to teach, and it needs to be what the Bible says. The older men are to be temperate, worthy of respect, self-controlled, and sound in faith, in love, and endurance. So this is to the men, because men are to be the leaders of our spiritual families. They are to be the leaders of our spiritual families. That's what the Bible teaches. 
and are to lead in self-controlled love, faith, and endurance. I speak to the men here today. Is there evidence of these attributes in your life? Is this the way your life looks in terms of self-controlled love, faith, and endurance? Verse 3 talks about, Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. You know, Christianity brought womanhood to a height it had never been before. Women were seen as valued. Women were seen and treated by Christ as valued and gifted providers of purity and devotion to the home and to the family and to the community. So to the women here today, as we look at your own, you look at your own spiritual health, How is your spiritual health in this regard? Are you fulfilling your obligations to your children, to your spouse, to your church, to your community? Verse 4 goes on, Then they can can train the younger women to love their husbands and children. You see, if you are doing the right things, if you are basing your life in the right way, if your spiritual health is good, then the spiritual health of your children will follow to be self-controlled, pure, to be busy at home, to be kind and to be subject to their husbands so that no one will malign the Word of God. Please don't turn off because I said subject to your husbands. (laughs) You know the verses. You know what the husband is supposed to do with his wife in terms of treating her like the bride. You know, so don't get hung up there. Likewise, encourage the young men to be self-controlled. These verses suggest that our spiritual health is based on sound doctrine, which is then evidenced by our sound faith. If we have sound doctrine, we live a life full of faith, and that faith then determines how we live. What is the second spiritual health check? The answer, does my life reflect my faith in God? How good am I living? What is my example in life, as people look at me and what I do with my children and with my husband or wife or anyone else. Finally, this morning, the state of our spiritual health can be diagnosed by our soundness of speech. I can go just a little further into Titus 2 and read verse 6 again. Similarly, encourage the young men to be self-controlled and carry on with verse 7 and 8. In all things, set them an example. Set them an example to be self-control, uh, uh, sorry, an example, by doing what is good in showing your integrity, your seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. We are verbal communicators. This is how we communicate most of what we need to communicate, through our words. So use of words is the most important tool of a relationship building, the relationship we have with God, the relationship we have with one another. The method may be changing from the spoken word to the digital word and thumbs, thumb-type exercises. However, it is the words that are the key. Not only the words we choose, but also the spirit we convey through our words. That speaks volumes about our spiritual health. As a young man himself, Titus set an example with his own life for the young men in his congregation. As a pastor, he was sound in speech, but this was also part of what he was to teach the members of his congregation. Is your speech sound? Is it spiritually sound? And for this, you're going to have to think back. You're going to have to think of situations. You're going to have to think of your own life when times maybe didn't turn out to be just what you wanted. When you face an issue that is not to your liking. What are your words like? What are the words you instinctively choose to use? Are they words, if there's a problem, of inquiry? Are they words of clarification? Let's find out. Are they words of correction given in love? Or are they words of accusation? 
words of anger, words of bitterness and frustration. You know, our words and how they are used are a measure of our spiritual health. So we need in our health check to examine ourselves and to think back as I had to do with my doctor. Well, I remember the other day, it was a couple weeks ago, I haven't had it since, but this is what happened. Well, how have you responded with your words in situations that have not been the best? Our words, how they are used, are a measure of spiritual health. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, we are told, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Ephesians 4.29. Negative talk denotes a spiritual health that is not good. Gossiping, backbiting, harsh, unwholesome, negative words, they don't build up. Christ is the master builder. He lifts us up. Words that do not, we shouldn't use them. We shouldn't use them. They are indicators of our poor spiritual health. So if you catch yourself, if you recall yourself, it's time to examine that. Go back to the doctrine. What are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to be? What are we supposed to have? Where do those words come from? They come from the heart. So maybe we need a heart change right now. No wonder God's word admonishes us. My dear brother, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. We just studied James in the last quarter. That's from James 1, 29. So in closing, let me just review. Today, as we enter a new year, as you evaluate yourself and have this health checkup, your spiritual health checkup, and you ask yourself, how do I know if my health is good? Think about these things. Sound doctrine. Are you schooling yourself in the Bible? Schooling yourself. Not just listening to a few words, but schooling yourself, reading it, studying it, testing it as the Berean does. When you find good doctrine, do you listen to it? Do you follow it? Do you test it and make sure? You examine your life in comparison to it. The foundation of your spiritual health is built on sound doctrine. What you believe, that's where it comes from because that will be in your heart. Sound faith is life producing the right kind of works in your life. Are you allowing God to lead and living a life of faith in Him, self-controlled and responsive to God's will? You know, we... We display our faith every day with what we say and what we do, how we respond. It is our display of our faith in the Lord. Are the fruits of your faith on display? And sound speech. Are you speaking correctly? We all get upset with things. We all dislike certain attributes and habits and events. But how are you verbally responding to those blips in your life and the lives of others? And how are you presenting the gospel to those around you? If your responses, if your admonishments, if your teaching, if your sharing of God reflects an attitude of arrogance, of superiority, rather than the humble, loving manner of Christ, you need a checkup. You need to go back to the doctrine. You need to go back to the Word of God and find out what your life is supposed to be and how you can change that word. Your speech is a measure of your spiritual health. It's the new year. Have you set your resolutions? Don't fib. You know you're going to. You've thought about it at least. When you do, don't ignore your physical health resolutions. But especially don't ignore your spiritual health. Make resolutions of what you need to do. It should be part of your personal health improvement program this year. And you do that by talking to God. And when he answers, be open to his response. This is the hardest thing. This is the toughest part of the entire message. So I'm going to say it again. As you come to God today, tomorrow, whenever it is, 
and say, I want to do a spiritual health check, God. I need to know how my spiritual health can be improved. What do I need to do? When God tells you, and he will, when you think about things and say, oh, I really should change this or that, you have to respond to it. You see, I've known for some time that I have stopped walking as much. I have stopped the resistance training. And I uh, feel I'm getting softer. And I feel I'm not as strong as I was before. But I didn't make a change. I knew it. I didn't need the doctor to tell me. I knew it. God will tell you what you need to do. You need to come to him and ask How is my spiritual health, Lord? Tell me what I need to improve my spiritual health. And when he tells you, you need to respond. You need to recognize your need because unless you call on God to enter your heart and provide you with the power of the Holy Spirit, your spiritual health will remain in a state of dis-ease. That's where you'll stay, and it will get worse. You will be closer to taking those roads and allow those ears to be itched and scratched to find the wrong doctrine and to go the wrong way. What you need to do is accept your need. Today we need to accept that, and we need to accept God into our hearts. And as we do, we can be at ease in our life. And that's my prayer for the new year for us all. Amen. Let's turn to number 500 in our books and sing a closing hymn.